Get that shot, Hobbs. I love that. Sh <laughs> Mary, watch your back. Uh -huh. Got a truck behind you. I'm watching your back, actually. Hell yeah, you are, dude. Get home. Get that shot, dude. California. Join the gang on a trip out west. Today, we're headed for beautiful, sunny, warm California. Okay, actually, there was biblically heavy rain, but the clouds miraculously parted just in time for our shoot day in wine country. But we're going right at it now. We skip past the wine country giants like Napa and Sonoma. Our destination is the California Central Coast, Paso Robles, AKA the Rhone Valley of the US. The temperate climate and limestone rich terrain is a perfect match for its French counterpart. And boy, does it make a good product. Now we all know a lot of great wines come out of California and a lot of them might be labeled quote unquote natural, but none of them have the same cred literally as Tablas Creek. Under the management of local legend Neil Collins, Tablas Creek is the first, and as of now, only vineyard in the world to have Gold Devil certification. Certific, I can't say it. Am I, am I... Certification. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh my God. Gold Devil certification from the Regenerative Organic Alliance. Perfect. Thank God. This label can be awarded to producers in all kinds of industries, from coffee to textiles, but the strict requirements about how you treat your land, your animals, and your employees certainly make it a road less traveled. Today, Neil and his son Austin are going to show us all the inventive and efficient strategies they use to make the vineyard a closed loop of healthy and hydrated soil, happy sheep, and grade A grapes. And just to be clear, this wine isn't great for an organic wine, it's just plain great. Neil's award-winning wines are proof that ethically regenerative farming doesn't mean settling for an inferior product. In fact, it's just the opposite. Now I enjoy a great wine, but you know what I love even more? Nerding out about gardening. So we'll obviously be tasting some exceptional wines today. But this episode ain't just for Somali A's, unless your specialty is nutrient-rich fermented compost runoff. Not my favorite vintage. Hey, get out of there. Grab your boots and hop on the truck. Let's go, sheeple. <laughs> oh, look at that, man. Sedimentary. It is super chalky. Watch this. Right, give me your knife. Where is it? In the in the zipper? Yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, man. Don't be carving your name in that rock. I'm not gonna. Okay. Brad was here. Yeah, I saw it coming. Why not? Look at him, he's done this before. Never. Local legends. Probably gonna spell it wrong. Be the opening of your show. Show me around town, yeah. Show me all the good spots. Local legend. Local legend. Local legend. Local legend. Do I say welcome back to local legends? I don't remember. Probably, why not? Why not? Just another legend. Just another old legend. Just another legend in the line. Hey guys, welcome back to Local Legends. Where are we again, Neil? Paso Robles. Paso Robles, California. California. Tablas Creek Winery and Vineyard. And today we're gonna to be showing you not only this beautiful vineyard, but what it takes to kind of operate and maintain a biodynamic, regenerative, organic farm. With Neil Collins, the head winery, and our legend today. Neil, thank you for having me. I'm excited, man. I'm excited to see what it is that makes this place so special. I'm just really blown away with what you've built more than just a winery. It's a full on farm. It's an organism. Yeah. We'll move some sheep to a new pasture. Sounds uh, kind of We'll difficult. go down and roll around the compost a little bit, show you what that's all about. It's a little muddy. Go see some bottling, go taste some wine. All right. Well, let's do the work first. Earn that meal. We'll maybe start with some biochar. Uh, Jordy's going to fire up the kiln for us. It's a fairly new project for us, but it's exactly. pretty pretty pivotal to what we do. Yeah, I'm excited to learn about this. We're all learning about it. We'll do this and we'll come back to it. Get a fire going, let it burn until you kind of see a, a layer of ash form on the top of the pile. Okay. And then you immediately put another. So you're not actually ever burning the wood to, to ash. It's You're always trying to keep it as char. So Jordy, Jordy will explain better than I can, but- Jordy's our guy. This just looks like a whole bunch of East Coast trouble. <laughs> That's it, man. <laughs> you're making a form of charcoal, essentially. So essentially biochar is, is it just one step further than 
than charcoal. Okay. Essentially, it's just pure carbon. We generate a lot of wood waste throughout the growing season. You're burning it into a usable form and then storing it underground. 95% of ag operations are right. just burning this. You're, you're putting all that carbon and yeah. potential nutrients, essentially, yeah, into the air. Yeah, you're just letting it go. One of the pivotal moments was we were burning a pile of grape canes one year and we filled the whole damn valley with smoke and we're just like, what are we doing? Right. There's got to be a better way to deal with this. So biochar, we're taking a waste product and making that a useful product to us within our vineyard. When you see this thing start rolling, all you're going to see is syngas coming off the top. Clean um, burning fire. Clean burning yeah, yeah, fire, yeah. smokeless. Right. You could be on the other side of this barn and you'd have no idea. You'd see heat waves, charring. not smoke. Yeah. Right. So you, after you're done, you mix yeah. this into... This is going to get mixed into our compost pile. Okay. And we'll absorb moisture and nutrient there. It's an um, ingredient for your compost. Yes. Okay. When we go to the compost, we'll be able to find biochar in the and compost. see it. That's awesome. We'll be able to yeah. feel it. Sounds like maybe you're trying to like mimic the natural process of like a like a, a wildfire, right? And that's definitely where I think where we learned that this is a value. It's just a very useful tool for us. It's just a, a closed loop system. And like you said, you already have it. It's free. Yeah, and it's fun. I mean, who yeah. doesn't like to stand around a huge fire? Fires pit? Yeah, ancient, bad. ancient television. I always yeah. called it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're just all breathing through the rectangle tubing. I couldn't figure out what it was. It's, it's him just oh, yeah. huffing through the pipe. <laughs> What you got there, bud? He's been doing it the whole time. Yeah. Awesome. We'll get out of your hair for a second. We're going to go do another chore around the farm. Thanks, we'll brother. come back. We'll help you pick up uh, where we left off. Sounds good. All right, thanks, brother. Right on. Have fun. It's going to be cool to see this thing ripping, too. All right. It's cool. Yeah. As we walk around, you're going to see everywhere all these walls. Yeah. This is all just rocks out of the vineyard. Oh, cool. A lot of work. Our vineyard crew built them. Nothing but work, huh? Well, I mean, some of it it's is. good work. Let's have a couple like real good guys here. We do. Yeah. There's one guy who's been here longer than me. His memory is like just where the pipes are underground. Just irreplaceable. Stuff that no one else can yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's our guy. He's a good kid, huh? Yeah. Okay, here's my son Austin bringing us some Loma Drone Red. Loma Drone. The family wine. Family wine. Thanks, man. Thank you, Austin. Thanks, yeah. Well, get yourself a glass and be joining us. When yeah. we said we we're going to farm organically on West Pass Robles, the locals were like, <laughs> Good luck. You'll be out of business. Yeah, along that line. Yeah. Can you just explain to me quickly what that means to be an organic anything? Well, it's really farming without the use of chemicals. The products used in major agriculture, a lot of it is chemical farming. And, you know, I'm not here to knock people sure. doing what they do. Feed, I mean, they're feeding people. It's just. It can be somewhat short sighted. We're all finding out we've all got Roundup coursing through our bloodstream, which that's not a great thing. No, it can't know? be. Right? A lot of the organic standard is more what you cannot do. And as you go to biodynamics, it's treating your farm like it's a one organism. Farming is your farm is, is a whole. Working with nature. Working with, with nature within your farm, that's the core of biodynamics. Right. So you're not bringing anything from the outside. Probably like how they used to farm. Totally, yeah. it's very traditional. Nothing new. It's very traditional. Yeah. From the very beginning, the goal was to farm organically. Okay. I got there in 98. 2003, I certified organic. 2011, we certified biodynamic. 2019-20, we certified ROC. We were the first vineyard in the world to attain that. In the world? In the world. Wow, no kidding. ROC, Regenerative Organic Certification, there are three pillars. The soil, animal, and the human elements. Their tagline, if you will, is farm like the world depends upon it. Sure. And that is the truth. Yeah, couldn't agree right. more. The only way we're going to change what's going on with climate, et cetera, agriculture is the way to change this. It's the huge thing. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree and more. And it can be done. You know, a lot of what we do works. A lot of what we do doesn't work, but we're always trying. We're always trying to find a better way to farm. I think we're going this way, Cheech. We did this thing called layering, which you can see here. We took this cane, yeah. right, coming off that vine. It goes down, it goes into the ground, underground, and then we brought it back up this stake, and then this vine grows from that because these nodes root underground. So that's why you put it under. It'll grow a whole nother. It'll grow a whole nother vine. And you, this guy, if going. it gets longer, we can keep going, do another one. There's some vineyards that I've heard that it's like an acre. It becomes a super organism, yeah. and it's just, yeah. So, I mean, in theory, you could have a whole row just from one vine. With a massive infrastructure of yeah. roots. independent but connected rooting yeah. systems. Plants are fascinating. So much smarter than we give them credit for. Yeah. Not what we're doing, but. All right, why don't you guys go have a glass of wine? 
Neil, I'll have this whole row yeah. uh, turned in probably, probably about 12 days. <laughs> Look at that though, huh? Beautiful. Let's talk dirt real quick. Let's talk your compost. Like, what are we making dirt out of here? What is this piece is great. It's great. Yeah. It's great. So scraps, pruning. We have a big chipper. We run through a chipper. Cool. Break it down a and little. And then as we're going through harvest, Jordy will come out here and whatever we've left from the night before, he'll mix into the piles. And whatever waste material, it goes in here. I mean, you can see it. I mean, like a tree stuck out of there. Yeah, it takes time. I'm sure this thing must throw some heat. So if you go to the center of this pile right now, it's warm. It's going to be warm. If we'd come out here this morning, uh, you would have seen just these these guys just are steaming. Cool, yeah. It's microbes. Steam. Microbes just, eating, feeding. Yep. And then we'll turn it fairly frequently just to keep that heat mixed and not let it get too hot in there. And then you start seeing the mycelium, the white fungus growing. And then it, it just. Isn't that amazing? It, oh, it's hot in there. Like to the point where you almost need a glove. But it smells fresh. Like it just smells, it smells rich. It smells minerally, you know, and it's, and it's hot. When I get my, you know, what, say almost, almost two feet in there. If I were to keep going, it would, it would become uncomfortable. That's really cool. And that's just, that's compost. I'm going to get uncomfortable if you keep going. Yeah. Thoughts, concerns? Can you put your head in the hole? <laughs> they, they say like a piece of biochar the size of your fingernail has a surface area of 10 football fields or whatever. Wow. But you can see the porosity of this. Oh, absolutely. Little biscuit. So much surface area for microbes to attach to and live in. It just is a haven. It's like a little vacant hotel that's vet that they would love to live in. You're creating that web of life beneath the surface. What it takes to ripen those grapes is taking nutrient from the soil. So we're just trying to give back. Right. But on like a bigger, more conventional farm, how is it being done? Then you're using fertilizers. You can buy organic fertilizers. A lot of people are just using chemical fertilizers, you know, high nitrogen. If you go into a forest and you start digging down in the leaves, you're going to find that. It's just decomposing material. Animals are going to move through and do their fertilization. Branches are going to fall, leaves are going to fall. It's gonna burn, there's gonna be charcoal. And we're just we're just emulating that really and and then we'll spread that in our in our yeah. vineyard. Oh I'm starting to see how this all works. It's not gonna rain from March, April till November. It's unbelievable. So we need to bank all the water we can. The main flow of water running off in this property comes down through here. You can kind of see how you can totally naturally see. it naturally works its way through here and it ends up making its way out to our neighbor's property. So, so if this was a mud pit, you, it would just it would just go and it would just river. erode everything. So the goal is, I mean, we can't stop the water. Never. So the goal is to stop its momentum so it doesn't cause so much damage. So as it comes through, you've got all those beneficial plants, that slows it down. Right, and all then, those natural grasses and deep roots from those exactly. shrubs. That's, that's your first that's line of your fence, like the, a sand dune. Slowing the flow. And then we used to run the compost piles in the other direction. This but way. last yeah. Last year we decided, well, let's turn them this way. That way they can be part of the slowdown. The next, the so next the, hit. So yeah. the water has to filter through them and then we catch it in a catchment pond. So this is all by design. Sure. To slow that flow. Because the whole thing is slow it down. And it's all keeping it, keeping your nutrients. That's like, like a pond of compost tea. It's, it's valuable stuff. Yeah. Well, that's liquid right? gold right there. Yeah. Hey, get out of there. I like this a whole lot. I like this a whole lot. If you were to cut down a thousand feet, you know, like a fourth grade uh, uh, geology book, what would be, what's your soil made out of? What's See that, that rock what right there? there? That rock, that limestone. Limestone. Chalk, limestone, calcium carbonate. That's under our feet. That, that came out of that hole. Is that something that is in the wine world folks look for? Is Super desirable. It helps with the acidity of the wine. This is really, really rare in California. But you look at Champagne, you look at Burgundy, you look at the Loire Valley, you look at the Rhone limestone. It's why the French part of this partnership wanted this property. One of the owners of Chateau de Bocsta, who is a partner of Talbot's Creek, and the American side, Robert Haas, and they were up in Napa tasting, and it was Cab, and it was Chardonnay, and sure. why is nobody growing Rome varieties here? Why don't we do a project where we do what we do in California, because this place is much more like the Mediterranean mm -hmm. than it is either Bordeaux or Burgundy. What I was tasked with by the owners of that property is to create wines that are reflections of that very, very special piece of property that they purchased on the west side of Paso Robles. That little because, terroir, right? Because I mean, like that you're... terroir is very, very special. I mean, yeah. very, very, Paso is very unique with its limestone, rainfall, and the fact that we're like 11 miles from the Pacific Ocean. Those cool nights slow the ripening down 
and give us the great acidity. If it were 100 degrees and it stayed 100 degrees all night. Having that Pacific Ocean with the right breeze is like having a giant air conditioner. Every night, for me, Big it's, potential. there's nothing better in this state. Every farm is a unique spot. Look at this guy. She's a unique dog. Well, she's get it, Charles. Get it, get it. I wish I was her. What a life, it's a huh? Dog, it's a dog's life. God, yeah. lucky soul. I don't soul. think you could be a better off. Austin's dog came from an apartment in town to live out here. She's oh yeah, like upgrade. Shangri-La. Upgrade. So, you mind just tell me a little bit about you know how you got into wine and how you ended up in this beautiful part of the country? From when I was like 15, I worked the lines in kitchens. That was in England, Bristol, England. Then you I, grew up in England. I grew up in England. As you do when you work within the restaurant industry, you build a an interest and a liking for wine starts boozing. Classic pairing. Yeah, exactly. And then you start building, oh, it's more interesting than just an alcoholic beverage. My my best method of learning is to do. So I wanted to find a small winery and I started cleaning the drains and learning to drive a forklift and washing barrels and all that stuff. I ended up going with the whole family, took the kids and the wife to France and lived at Chateau de Beaucastel for a year. The goal there was you're going to be our winemaker, so you're in the cellar. The man who was taking care of the vineyard at Tablas moved on. Mm -hmm. And they kind of called me in and said, well, will you manage the vineyard? I've never done that. I said, sure, I'll, of course I will. Making the choice to go organic and biodynamic and, and take regenerative practices towards your farming, you guys didn't have to do that. Why is it important to you? The great comment Bob said to his son Jason was, it's not really for you, it's for your kids. Planting a vineyard is a long, long-term vision to get it right. And it's exciting for, for me, you know, I've been there long enough now where my kids grew up there, mm -hmm. and now my grandkids are growing up there. Yeah. So. That's huge. And that's a beautiful thing. I don't think it's the, the American dream. I think it's the human dream to kind of build something like that where you can live off it and it's something of your passion and then also share it with your family and then have your family carry that torch. Just talking about this, it, it, it inspires and excites me. It's just like the, for the future of agriculture. It's hard to argue when you see a system like this. Everything about it seems right. How's the biochar incinerator going? She's ripping. It's my first fire hose. Let her rip. Yeah, Bobby. I almost burnt my hand. I'll get burned. My face! As soon as that water hit it, it was just instant steam. You could feel it. I mean, if you were too close, it would burn you. It smells like nutrients. Got a little funk to her. It smells like ecto cooler. Oh, this wait. Yeah, you don't want to. Well, that biochar. A little carbon soup, baby. Like it's a little factory. That's your little organic soil making factory. If you have a little fire pit or something, you can make this to benefit totally. your own home garden. You can do it in a hole in the ground. You can sure. do it in a pit. There's no reason you can't do a small batch for your garden and mix it in your veggie patch. It's a flatbed. This truck is sweet, bud. Oh, so classic. Austin, man. Well, first of all, I'm in love with your 1985 Toyota Tacoma. You guys got a really awesome place. You got a lot of hard work you do on a daily basis. Working with Decked on season two here, a really cool, you know, buddies of mine, they make this really awesome product made in the United States, 100% recycled plastic, weatherproof. You know, we figured you guys could put it to work out here at this beautiful vineyard. We'll just park over here and walk through the creek bed. Oh, great. Oh, we're going down in here. How many sheep are we moving? We'll probably it... split them in half. Oh, yeah. Because I think there's close to 300 head right now with right. all the new lambs. Good job, pups. Well, I hear our sheep are kind of barking. Yeah, I think they're ready. The sheep bark. They're barking. Yeah, they're that's barking. Like, they call that barking. Right. I can't help but ask. You know, there's some good rolling hills around here. Talk to me about predators. We have man lions. That's the big. Sure. That's the big daddy. How do you fight against that? We have dogs. Big dogs with a loud voice. <laughs> Bjorno. Bjorn. Look at you, huh? Yeah, look at the mitts on those dogs. Good God. 
They are incredible animals. I mean, there's a lot of different guardian dogs. We chose Mastiffs. And a man lion is just going to kind of look at that and go, well, maybe not. Right, sure, sure. You know, I'm going to go somewhere else, get dinner. Oh, my God. <laughs> Funny animals, ain't they? They're ridiculous. <laughs> Okay, you ready? Action! Okay, let her rip! Jesus Christ. Oh my god. Cheap. They'll just stop and like clog up a little section. It's always one. How do you use the sheep to contribute to these biodynamic regenerative practices? I guess in a way you're trying to recreate the natural scheme of things where animals they would always be moving, fertilizing and setting up for fertilizing more growth. They go. We move them every once two days. So they go into a block of grapes. They eat down, and you know we'll try and leave a good amount of green still there. And then, and then move them to the next. Oh yeah, that's the shop pop. The king. That guy is king the king of, king of all dogs. Okay, we haven't met yet, buddy. How are you doing, big guy? Oh my god, he's a beast. King. Okay, you know, buddy, huh? Big boy. Good boy, Bjorno. Yeah, you are, huh? How old? Five or six. You see him run, it's like, oh my god. Oh, if you were to get pissed, it'd probably be yeah. so terrifying. You, you want nothing to do with him. <laughs> oh my god. And what's that breed of dog? That's a they're Spanish Mastiff. Yeah. Their role in life is protecting. Okay. If you were to approach the sheep pen as the sun was going down, they have a whole different demeanor. They still won't hurt you or anything, but they're a lot. They're on. We don't lose sheep to predators anymore. Cool critters. Cool critters, man. <laughs> what Hobbs got? She thinks she might be enamored with the sheep. Yeah, pull her out of the sheep. She went down a sheep hole. Tomorrow they'll be back in the vineyard doing their job. Happy. So passing through block to block. And that's where they're going to go and you guys have all that beautiful cover crop. Exactly. I mean, it, was, it looked like salad. You could probably, humans could probably eat the we majority. Could, you can, the majority of you can and people do. So they never leave this property. Right. And these are seventh or eighth generation on this property. Oh, wow. There, there are services now. It's becoming more and more common and there's services that will bring the sheep we'll in. Truck them in. We don't want to bring in sheep that have just spent a week in someone else's vineyard. Yeah, we, we want our own sheep. Yeah. That have eaten and lived on this land. Right. You know, they're, they're the Talbot Street gang. Excuse me, quiet. We're, uh, we're filming something, guys. All right, we know you want to get into that salad patch. We know. Just give us a second. Careful on the rocks. Look at those little cuties, huh? Yeah, hilarious. Tell me this doesn't feel right. Oh, that's awesome. You know, it's like, yeah. You ain't kidding. When we started bringing this sheep into the vineyard, it seemed like a great idea right there. It feels really good. What I didn't anticipate was all of a sudden, all these people that work there, like the owner, and even like the, the head of the vineyard crew, started showing up on weekends with their kids, like to see the animals. And, right. And the whole thing just starts to feel better. Gar! This is Madonna. He's been here. Character? He's the OG. Oh yeah? He's like, get out of my road. <laughs> <laughs> David Madwenia. <laughs> Speaking of local legends. Yeah. Oh. The third pillar of, of this certification is the human element. Wow. Do your vineyard workers know their rights? To take the ROC to the gold, anyone that steps foot to work on that property is paid not the minimum wage, but the living wage. Or li a living wage. Right, and I, I understand not every farm and every farmer can do yeah. that. We can. But you don't have to. Our owner, Jason, when I went and presented it to him, it's like, you know, we can get gold, but the living wage is going to increase our expenditure by whatever, a couple oh, yeah. hundred grand a year. His response to me was, we're a profitable company, and I can think of no better place for those profits to go than to our work. Wow, that's amazing. But, yeah. You can feel that property, how different it is. There's an electricity to the wines. It feels special. It's not just beautiful, but you, it's, it's live. This wine is the first wine we bottled with the gold ROC seal. So we were the first winery in, first the, in the world. First winery in the world to get that designation. Okay. This is the first bottle we've ever put it on. 
and this is the first bottle that's Stop ever it. been drunk. So you're no going to drink the first glass of wine from the first gold sealed. Are you sure you don't want to do this with somebody else? I do, but you're here, so. <laughs> As a whole in farming practices in this country, having that monoculture, nature doesn't really seem to like that. Just profit seems to, it seems, right? Totally, but that can be changed too. You can do it better, you can do it differently. Just like those many so-called miracle pills marketed over the years claiming to guarantee perfect health, industrial farmers have been pushing the broad brush monoculture, one size fits all method that yield results in the short term but just don't work out in the long run. How do you fix it? It's a complicated question, but after my day at Cobbles Creek, it seemed like the answers are obvious. I mean, the place was a freaking paradise, buzzing with life. There's no panacea, but there are universal ancient practices and principles that can be applied to any industry. Work with nature, not against it. Don't use toxic chemicals and pesticides. Biodiversity is mandatory. The Tablas Creek project is intended to be multi-generational. So our mission is to leave it better for the next guy. You don't have to be ROC. You don't have to certify anything. Make a step towards organic. And is it harder? Yeah, it's a little bit harder. If you believe this is good, then it's not a race to get there, but make the steps of farming for your land and for your family and for your kids. You know, I got grandkids. I, I don't want it to be a wasteland for them. Sure. I want them to roll around in the dirt. It's yeah. trying to take this land and not just beat it to death to make a profit off the crop. Do one thing. Start. Change one thing. Yeah. In a world where the effects of climate change are all around us, we have to be willing to farm like the world depends on it because it does. And Neil taught me it's not nearly as hard as people think. If you continue doing a small percentage of what we try at Tablas Creek, and we try a lot of stuff, if a small percentage of it sticks, you've made an improvement to what you're doing, and right. hopefully you can inspire other people to, to start playing too. <laughs> Look at us! So much fun! It's Come carbonated. Above. That's a and big glass of wine. While you're laughing and looking at both of you at the same time. Exactly. <laughs> How good are you? Oh, 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 oh. oh look at us! Oh, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Yeah, cheers. Thank you. Thanks for being here.